Thank you so much. I just want to put not several dots in this occasion, but few dots that probably you need to connect with each other with your own passion and imagination. My talk, which I displayed here, is a technological lift to ancestral gift. Food, energy, water nexus for sustainability. These three items, probably the basic of the basic. If you just think about your own home, when you are waiting for a liter of water to come every week probably, or every day, you are looking for some kind of energy sources that keeps your house running. And of course, food stops that you need to fulfill your hunger. They are all interconnected. They are all interconnected. We have been taught to think in a silo, like in isolated, only think about water security, only think about food security, only think about energy security. But they are so interlocked, so complexity in between. They are independent, not independent. They are very much interdependent with each other. So with my small concept, which also um, comes in, you know, whether for the sustainability, we have to look for the modern age or we have to look for the UN to provide us a 15 years of ultimatum by 2030, we have to achieve the sustainable goal. You see here the water, energy, food, how complex they are interconnected with uh, each other. And if you also indulge yourself, whether a GDP growth in terms of your well-being, then what comes in your mind, whether you should have a high GDP or you should have a high SDI, Human Development Index. Now, it, the three, this, the small chart which provides you 17 goals that we have to achieve by 2030. This is the Sustainable Development Goal uh, by UN, provided by UN. And at the bottom, you can see this is the natural environment. You have to have climate action, that means clean climate. You have to have a clean water and also life. The biosphere also should be. And these two others at the end is the cooperation, collaboration, and the activities and actions that require the policies, etc. If you go a little bit higher, then you can find the built environment. You can find your society. You can find there are many, many different infrastructures going on. That is required based on our environment. We have to go for building our own society. And at the top, then you find yourself there. And this is what we have to achieve is the no poverty by 2030 zero hunger and you know the very good health quality education etc you can read that one and equality everywhere you can see the common denominator if you draw the lines then you can find these three dots we have already given the zero hunger it's a food clean water water of course and the energy our ancestors already knew that one, already knew that one. The energy they got from solar energy, food, whatever they have already, they're in possession, they're a piece of land from where they could grow, enough food, and of course the water. Water was a little bit difficult, but they were trying to not to pollute your surface run of water, this um, river, but they wanted to take that water whatever provided nearby to their villages. And that was not house to house provided, but there at, at some places where 
people have to go and face the water. Of course, if you think in other direction that it is a hardship for people, and of course, among them, the hardship uh, is what in our society, unfortunately, what uh, my previous speaker also told, that the woman, children had to face, them, face that one. But there was, or there were also our ancestors who tried to devise technologically in order to safeguard these own society, own people, and provide them no hardship, little bit of relief of the hardship they had before. And so all connected, all connected. In the first picture, you can see how these three items connected with each other in a society. Of course, just remove all the um, technological lift, all wind turbines and the solar gain, and but just think basic of the basic is we have water supply already. We had ponds, lakes, streams. We had a piece of land and also small houses. Of course, we were just going out of the cave and wanted to build our own society. On the right side of your screen, you can see you know, few, uh, many other countries are having their uh, strategy, how they are going to uh, cope with these three elements. Um, in our country, Ministry of Energy, Water Resources, and Irrigation. If we can see, if we read, energy, water resources, and irrigation. Irrigation is food, equivalent to water resources, water, and energy. So one single ministry can address these three. We call it nexus of food, energy, and water. Now, if you think only isolation, then you can think of the left side. If there is energy, that means in terms of light, there is no water. And the other day, there is enough water coming, but no light. But we wanted not like that. We wanted to have some more um, integration. And the problem was the conflict between these three also. If not properly managed, then we can end up with conflicting uh, with each other. Water needs for power generation, irrigation, water needs for irrigation, water is for day-to-day uh, -day health aspect, you know, public health, uh, for a, a person to drink water. So if this is not properly managed, then we'll end up with the conflict. Now, with the time in 21st century, we have been given a lot of technological uh, things in our hand. I have this mobile phone also. And there is a simple question. The, there are people also, philanthropists, want to give you some more, uh, more things just for them, probably for the vote. Cell phones, laptops, saris, swing machine. But there at the end, per person is, you know, why don't they provide enough food, water or food or something? And that was the very, very, uh, you know, in our society, it is going on. And on the right, and right side, you can say, now engineers are confused. In a built up in a environment, we built up society, and they don't know where the water pipelines are. And he is just giving the money to a fortune teller to find out where the water lines are. <coughs> this is just this old man, elderly man, is bringing the water right directly from this water spot. And that was created long, long back. Even you don't, don't know where long back. Kiratis built this. Okay? Not probably this one. Probably the Kiratis brought this spot, uh, water spot from somewhere from Tirzim. For They were just migrant. And they, they came to Nepal and they started building the water spots. Think, this is very simple water sp spots. But the complexity in between thousands of years even, we are still having water from these water spots. And they, how beautifully they are decorated also. They had, this beautiful decoration has also something to say. If you know that one, I just tell you that this is for maintaining for a long, long time. This is a kind of a artifacts 
but not only the artifacts, but this is in built in our tradition and culture that to maintain that water spots. But we have been forgetting this simple thing. Now, I bring my own example, and everybody can do it. Start from family, start from your own home. Every house can be energy house. And this is what I have uh, given here. My house is not only decorated with the photovoltaics, but, but now also we have the composting plant and water harvesting system. So all those three provide me ample opportunity whenever we have some problems, uh, be it be, uh, you know, block it from India or, or um, climate change, uh, degradation of our livelihood, I'm safe. If I could be safe, you could be safe also. Think, three things, food, energy, and water. And it's only few things. The other thing our ancestral gave is this water mill. And they wanted to relieve their sisters, wife, or um, mother from their hardship provided mechanical power of water to listen their hardship. And this is the water mill. And this water mill in, at Kathmandu University, we have seen it, whether we can lift it, a technological lift to ancestral gift, whether we can improve the water mill to generate electricity, and we did it. And this is manufactured in Nepal, the generator. On top of that water mill, this generator, we Research here, we produced with Nepali hands and minds, and also we installed in six places of Kavre, the, um, Dading, and Nuakot. And the happiness is there. When they have light, they can utilize this water mill, otherwise would be only uh, utilizing for grinding the grains, but also in the free time, they can also generate the electricity. <coughs> And the happiness still, some of the photos, you see, at the end, the children are watching the television and, you know, watching the television in one aspect is good for education. And also there is also, you know, hidden difficulties of the one. Once you uh, upgrade, uplift your technologies, you should have also in your mind that it should not be abused. It should not be abused. The technology should not be abused. So, and for this, the, there were several grants and the several awards uh, it won. And uh, because of that, uh, we, could, we could continue the research at the Kathmandu University. Thanks to my students and thanks to my um, fellow colleagues and uh, professors that we could achieve that one. Now at the end, I would like to say that if you, whenever possibility you have, don't waste your energy. You save your energy. Saving is not becoming poor. Saving is your culture. And then you can think of, there is one thing, save water, save electricity, and save food. Okay, that is one uh, small picture there is a slice of pizza. Everybody knows that one. You know, this is, I took it from one uh, document which was produced um, in Gracia. Uh, produced by um, American um, NGO, but that because of their culture, they it, they like pizza very much. That's why the example there is. It could have been our Momo. <laughs> yeah, Momo. Think Momo, and it has everything in it. If the balanced way of putting water on the dough, the dough comes from the uh, kitchen uh, garden or from field, the wheat, and of course you need some fire to cook the momo and momo is tasty and this is that few momo better for your health don't eat too much momo <laughs> and one challenge i always give my students also this is written in nepali but nepali is very rhythmic and if i first i tell you in nepali and then you can translate this is in english also you know that is the ch uh, technological challenge also my future is Students and future engineers also. Banao pravidi khadilo. Banao pravidi khadilo. Dhunge chulo vanda sajilo. Banao pravidi khadilo. Dhunge chulo vanda sajilo. Puryao indhan yesto 
दाउरा भन्दा पनि सस्तो Our ancestor gave us very, very pertinent technology. Three stones, it's a stove. So it's so easy to build it. You put some pieces of wood, then it provides you energy. And then the rest is to feed your family, cooking. Okay, and water is needed there. So the, all the time, basic of the basic is the food, energy, and water. That's why it's called few. Few can be remembered because only you need to think few things. These are the things. So everybody should have this in mind and try to, try to be very, very conscious about your environment. You don't need any mobile phone to save you from climate change. Probably sometimes it provides you some information, of course. This is also important for information technology. But if mobile phone is not there, sometimes you can forget about this. But water, everywhere you look for water. Everywhere you look for something to cook. Everywhere you look for something to eat. So please, be conscious and think about few things. And that is food, energy, and water. Thank you so much.